In this video, we compare the capacity and speeds of access of media and make a judgment about their suitability for different situations and applications. This video covers the suitability of storage media in certain situations and compares their capacity. We introduced the concept of different types of secondary storage in the previous video. If you've not seen it yet, we suggest you go back and watch that video first. So let's just summarize the three main types of secondary storage you need to be aware of for the exam. We have magnetic, that consists of hard disk drives and tapes, optical, CDs, DVDs and Blu-ray, and solid state, SSD drives, memory sticks, flashcards, etc. In the exam, you'll need to compare the capacity and speed of access of various media and make sensible judgments about their suitability for different scenarios. So here's a nice summary table. Note that hard disk capacity is measured in mega, giga and terabytes and optical storage CD, DVD and Blu-ray uses a similar method. Hard disk and SSD access speeds are measured in input-output operations per second, or IOPS. We can see here that magnetic hard disks have the highest capacity. After that, we tend to have solid state, and then various formats of storage capacity for our optical media, with Blu-ray being the biggest, followed by DVD, and the smallest amount of storage being CDs. So let's have a think about a number of different scenarios. So let's imagine here we have a helmet mounted action camera. And this is going to be read by a motorbike cyclist competing in a competition. What sort of storage device would we want for this camera? Pause the video and have a think. Well, the answer here is going to be solid state storage. The reason for this is that solid state is durable. This storage device is likely to receive lots of bumps, knocks and vibrations due to the nature of the situation in which it's being used. A magnetic hard drive, although it has a large capacity and would be cheaper, is prone to this type of movement. Optical would be completely inappropriate in this situation. So a solid state drive, which is highly durable, would be ideal. What about this situation? A home computer storing operating systems and applications. Well, in this situation, a traditional magnetic hard disk would be most suitable. It's one of the cheapest of the solution. It has a very large amount of capacity, but it can store the operating system in many different software applications. And because this computer is fixed and in one place, and is going to receive very little movement, we don't have to worry about the durability issue, as we did with the previous scenario. So what about the situation where you want to distribute a video game? Well, the most appropriate form would probably be an optical disc. Many computer games are still distributed on a disc format. And finally, what about storing tracks on a portable MP3 player or something like a smartphone? Well, again, this goes back to the first situation. This is a portable handheld device. You're going to be taking it on the move may be storing it in your pocket or a bag. It's likely to receive vibrations, knocks, bumps. It's prone to maybe being accidentally dropped. Therefore, the best type of secondary storage device will be a solid state hard drive, as it's the one that's least susceptible to these types of vibrations. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How are input, output and storage devices used in typical applications of computer science?